one is. If it's no Scottish, it's crap. It's no Scottish, it's crap. It's no Scottish, it's crap. Howdy, howdy. John Boy, the U.S. Piper with you. Got my old Rossi 320. And uh, picked this up today, the local tobacconist. Been meaning to try this. Seen a few videos on it. It's kind of like a one of Mac Barron's English or crossover style aromatics, or at least that's the way I understood it. Um, seems to be mostly Virginian Burley. Little touch of Cavendish, I'm assuming, is probably unsweetened black Cavendish, but there's a little bit. It's not a ton of it. Uh, supposedly like 35 different leaves in there, different tobaccos. So I'm assuming that's mostly in the Virginias, probably a few Burleys. Maybe marketing, who knows. But it does seem to definitely have some different, you know, looking at it, it does have several different not just colors of tobacco, but you've got like some ribbons, some kind of chunky stuff, some broken flake, uh, at least two different contours of broken flake in it. This particular bowl, I had a surprising amount of broken flake hit the tray. Uh, the top note is, I'm taking it to be kind of a alcohol, I think it's rum, it's kind of like a navy flake uh, top note, but a lot a lot more of it um to the point that i think you can call it an aromatic but it's 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 kind of like plum cake but even even still more of a top note it's very good though very enjoyable you could call it an aromatic that doesn't suck or you know an aromatic that's for people that don't like aromatics, crossover, English style aromatic, what have you. I know it's Scottish, you know, McBaron mixture, Scottish blend, but um, it's, I feel like it's probably a light rum, not like a dark or spiced rum. But I feel that in there with it is a little bit of sweetness. There's a little more citrus going on than I think is just in the Virginia, so I think there's a there's a little bit of a citrus essence of some kind in there, maybe some lemon. At times, I feel like I get kind of a dark fruit. Plummy, earthy, plummy, apricot-y something. If you retrohale it, it's almost like the completely non-peppery perique that's in a scudo, you know, that kind of dark fruity thing you know but I think it's in the top note because there's no perique in this and I do feel like as you smoke this is my second bowl and it's a big bowl both bowls have gone hit the hour mark in a 320 KS um, and I'm, I'm probably on the bottom 10% now it seems very uniform from top to bottom. It does build on, the top note does build on your palate a little as you go, but it kind of hits the point where it doesn't go beyond. I would say it's probably on the line for me of, like I wouldn't want there to be more, but it's still acceptable, it's still good. Uh, it hasn't gone over the line, but it's as much of that as I wanted something. But it's very enjoyable, so it's not a bad thing. An example of the opposite of that would be this. I really enjoyed uh, the GLP sixpence as far as the way the Virginias are laid, uh, layered, the Perique. I feel all those things are masterfully, masterfully blended in this. That little touch of Kentucky in the background, I honestly think that works, but the topping in this is a deal breaker. Bad topping. Bad topping. Bad topping. It just... It ruined it for me. It's a deal breaker. And it's not just the topping, but it's the topping with that little background of Kentucky. Those things together, it like magnifies the, the badness of the topping. Whereas I think if it weren't for the topping, it'd be a really nice blend. Um, so this is more like what I was hoping that would be like as far as a top flavor that, that is enjoyable. Mm. 
And this has been around a long time, and I see why. It reminds me at times a lot of plum cake, but I feel like it's more accessible. Plum cake is very finicky. It's one of those you probably want to go ahead and jar for a week or two before you smoke. It's a lot bitier when it's freshly opened. This, open it up, load and smoke, you're fine. Um, plum cake uh, is really good, but it's very picky about your cadence, your speed, the burn temperature. You have to sip it. You have to keep it in its window. And when you keep it in that perfect window, it unlocks all these wonderful flavors and and nuances that just arrive on your palate. And it's wonderful. But if you go beyond that, it will remind you that you have you've you've gone beyond the window. Please back up. Uh, with this, I've smoked this hard on purpose a few times just to see if it would get bitey. And at maximum chewing, it kind of acted like it wanted to, but it never did. I'm probably not particularly tender tongued. I feel like uh, the the Virginias did naturally stove a little bit towards the bottom. That that was nice, but it's hard to really it's hard to pick this one apart because the top note is far enough forward on it that while it is bracing the Virginias and pulling everything together, it's keeping you from really going looking for any nuances. Like I feel like they're there and that it is a good blend, and that it has a lot of good tobacco-ness to it. But you can't really pull it apart and scrutinize it, because the top note's loud enough that it's just that with a little bit of Cavendish. It's it's cooler burning, I would say, than, uh, than the plum cake. It's easier, more accessible. Because like I said, it's not finicky. It burns well. It burns long, you know. If I was going to smoke it outdoors, I would pick this over plum cake. Plum cake, I kind of, that's a slow kind of, I want to be in my little zen space and I want to have that hour to my plum cake to just be quiet and enjoy the pipe and enjoy that smoke. And and um, it's a more thoughtful kind of smoke. Um, whereas this is kind of like, no matter what you do to it, it seems to have a very consistent flavor. It's a very agreeable flavor. And uh, I feel like, you know, if it was an around the campfire thing, this would probably do better than plum cake. Um, especially if you're carrying on a conversation and whatnot around that campfire. Um, I can finally hit the bottom on this. We're right at about an hour of smoke time, so... Both of them was right at an hour with a 320 KS. Looks like just a little small amount of dial, not much. There was even less on the first one. I think I, I think I smoked it a little lower the first time, but there wasn't much wasted there. I definitely got the best part of it. But it burns clean. Doesn't really seem to put a lot of moisture in the pipe. Uh, burns to nice gray white ash and uh, very enjoyable very enjoyable smoke um, it's kind of hard to pick apart because of the top note but I do enjoy the top note and the overall flavor composite flavor is kind of all of it together and you can't really twist it apart um, to me but the top note will never be bigger than it is on a freshly opened tin so you know, it may be one where after it gets some jar time and some air for a week or two, I may be able to pull a lot more nuances out of it because I have a feeling that they're there. I have a feeling they're there to be had. They're just not there to be had on a freshly opened tin. So we will definitely revisit it. Um, I've had two bowls of it today. So, you know, like I said, I popped it this afternoon and I've spent two hours with it. So I feel like I, I can tell you what a fresh open tin is like and it's very enjoyable. And that's my get, best guess on the top note is that it's it's a lighter rum. It's not a really rummy or dark or spicy rum. But I think that there's some essences dissolved in it and that there's a little bit of sweetness in that top note as well. Because there's a little bit more sweetness. Now, it's hard to say what the Cavendish could possibly bring, but it's it's not a lot in there. So it's consistent enough in both the sweetness and the citrus that I think it's more than just tobacco. You know, I, I think it's part of the top note 
But that top note does a really good job of pulling everything together into a very good, very enjoyable, enjoyable, uh, if not particularly nuanced, uh, especially for something with that many tobaccos. But that may be the art with that many tobaccos in it, assuming that's not just sales talk and there's actually 35 tobaccos in the 10. That's a lot. I don't know. Maybe. But there's definitely more than a couple. I mean, you can tell looking through it that there's 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 a fair amount of stuff going on in there. But, uh, yeah, it's a good smoke. It's a good smoke. It burns slow. It doesn't seem to burn very hot. It's not very finicky on tempo or cadence. Um, it's better sipped, certainly, um, or, you know, within reason. But if you chooch it a little bit, it seems to let you get away with it fine. Uh, so yeah, it would be a good all around social campfire or whatever smoke. I feel like, uh, this will be a good one for me when I, I just don't know what I want. Like, do I want another English? Do I want this or that? One of those where I want something different, you know, that's when I'd probably bust that out for me. Not an everyday smoke. It could be if you just fell in love with it. Certainly if some people are, it is for some people, I would hate to get sick of it. Um, I don't think I'm going to become as emotionally attached to that as I am probably like plum cake, which I don't know. I just, that has a special spot in my heart, but that said, I don't smoke it every day. I don't even smoke it every week. Um, I probably average once a month with it. Um, but I don't know. It, it's a really good, I really like that too, but that has, there's ways you have to treat that. There's, you know, you got to respect the plum cake. And that's one I would never want to get sick of. And I really do like this. So I feel like I wouldn't want to get sick of this by smoking it every day. But when I'm in the mood for something a little different, um, it's a good accessible tobacco. And uh, it is tasty. It is a tasty blend. That is a tasty tobacco. But... We'll see. We'll revisit it. Uh, let me let me let it have a little jar time, get a little air. We'll come back and see if we don't pull a little more nuance out of it and kind of see what the top note does with a little time and air. A lot of McBaron blends like this uh, kind of do that. Like plum cake, that's why it's so bitey. I feel like that alcohol topping that's in that, which I feel like is some rum, <coughs> dissipates and pulls back a little. Um, so this will probably do that too, but I feel like there's some essences that are in there with that. So we'll see, we'll see where it ends up. It should be interesting. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep this short, sweet and to the point. It's a good smoke. It's not expensive. It's like 12 something for a hundred gram 10. So, you know, it's a fair amount of smoke for a fair amount of cash. Um, I paid a little more than that at the local brick and mortar, but, uh, I saw it. It was on the list. You guys are just that important to me, man. <laughs> I just wanted, I wanted a new toy, I guess. Uh, and you know, they're really good people. So if it's got to end up in somebody's pocket, you know, there are worse places it could go. Uh, they're good folks. It's a really nice store. And the on place, the online place doesn't have a nice leather couch and, you know, uh, that I can sit down and smoke a pipe if I want to. And, an outdoor smoking lounge and you know there, there's some upkeep on a place like that i i, I understand things are going to be a few dollars more but uh, mick baron is usually one of those with them where i usually order it online versus there because they have pretty decent prices overall on most of their stuff and uh there's a lot of things that i don't mind paying a little more for there because sometimes i find stuff with some age on it and for somebody that doesn't have more of a seller than i have that's really nice and special and well worth, you know, a little bit of an upcharge besides the fact that it's a wonderful store and they're wonderful people. So, you know, I really like the place. Um, it's, I think it's their second location and, uh, they're good, they're good people. So, you know, you got to support your local B&Ms or you won't have any. And especially since we don't know what's going on with the whole online thing, who knows, you know, it's like coronavirus. I'm not going crazy, but I'm putting back what I can within reason. It's, it's like ketchup. It's not like I'm not going to use it. <laughs> you know, if it's something I know I enjoy and I know I'm going to want a good deal more of, then, you know, it's not like the prices on stuff are going to go down. So, you know, <laughs> but I'm not going crazy either. So, uh, putting back what I can at a comfortable rate and, uh, 
but I'm still trying different things too. So I don't want to hem myself into just worrying about putting back enough of five blends. You know, I just, I enjoy variety and I enjoy trying stuff. So this is one of them. I've enjoyed trying this and we'll give it a little jar time, a little air time, come back to it, see how it changes, see how it ages a little bit. Um, I look forward to it. I think it probably will drop back a little bit on the top note and maybe we'll get a little more nuance out of the tobacco because I feel like it's there. It's just not accessible right now. I feel like there's more there to be had than what I can pull apart as it is on the freshly opened tin. So is that the case? I don't know. Time will tell. John Boy, the U.S. Piper. Y'all have a blessed evening.